Hi, Willy Thistlers. It's Kim here with Yoga for Knitters, so back with another episode just for you. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Patreon if you would like more yoga and info. So today's class is all about taking a break, which is what we really need to do the most of when we knit or crochet or do any kind of crafty thing with our hands because we tend to get in a funky shape and we're doing repetitive tasks. And both of those things can sometimes cause our energies to flow in the wrong direction. I know you didn't think I was gonna say that, right? Um, so today's class is all about getting our energies to flow again in the right direction so that after our break, we can get right back at it. Let's get started. So for today's class, we are gonna sit on a chair and if it's necessary for you, I'm short, so it's necessary for me, prop your feet up so that your legs aren't, you know, at a too much of a downward angle here at your hips. You want to be comfortable. So your knees are stacked over your ankles, your knees are out from your hips, your spine is stacked nice and straight up your back. And by straight, I mean anatomical, not like ramrod straight, but a nice curve where everything just stacks on top of the other. So from here, we are going to start by tapping. So start by taking your fingertips I do this a lot in our facial, in my facials, and it feels so good. So you just tap along the eyebrows, that brow bone, right where the eye socket hole is. Tap a little bit there, and then come down, and you're going to tap along the cheekbone. You see how everything just feels invigorated and un unawakened when you do this. Then come to tap or massage in the jaw, right in that muscle, that great big masseter muscle, your chewing muscle, it gets so sore, especially if we clench at night or clench when we're tight. We hold a lot of tension in our faces, so this is a good way to get rid of it. Next, you're going to find your clavicle, your collarbone here, and you're going to come all the way to towards the middle until you feel where the bone ends and there's this little like horseshoe dip. So right where the bone ends, come down about an inch and tap right there. That's called your K27 and it is part of the kidney meridian. And this, when it's aligned, when the energy here is aligned, that means you are more focused and more energized. It's important when you've got cable work to do, right? Or color work, something complicated. And you don't have to tap hard, just a night life. Nice light tap is enough, that'll do. <clears throat> and then you're gonna come down, uh, sorry, come to the middle where your sternum is, like where your rib cage comes together, and then down about two inches and tap there. That's the thymus. Same idea here. Going to realign our energy, give us more energy. Make everything flow the way it should. Good. And then you're gonna come to your nipples, come down underneath, feel the first rib, and then come down to the rib below that. So that not the first rib right underneath where everything folds, but below, and then top there. That's the spleen. If you have a wired bra, this isn't going to work very well. But if you've got a sports bra or no bra, even better, this will be great. Good thing to do in your pajamas. Maybe in bed before you get up. And this is going to boost your immune system. So even if you are sick, this is a great one to do. I'm sick, so I'm happy to be doing this one because I know that means I'll get better even faster. <sighs> okay, hands on your knees, just feel it. A few deep breaths. Feel the shift. What is your energy level like? Do you feel more abundant, more awake, more focused? You probably do. One more series of exercises. Bring your arms out to your sides. Oh, and as you do that, you're gonna notice there is a requirement 
to steady yourself by tightening the core. And I don't mean like Ooh, tightening the core. I mean like 10%, 20%, maybe 30% engagement as you move into these exercises, just to keep us from flopping all over the place. We wanna stay stable in the core, okay? So arms are out at your sides. You're gonna roll the arms backwards as if you were tracing a tiny little golf ball. So just small little circles here. And while you're doing that, pay attention to the muscles in your neck. Are they creeping up? Are your shoulders creeping up towards your ears? Is your neck getting tight? I want you to relax the neck, relax the shoulders, and do all the work in your arms up to your deltoids. Leave this part out of it. Okay, we're gonna make those circles a little bit bigger. So now we're tracing a baseball. Might be getting a little bit tired. That's a good thing, getting stronger. And then finally, you're gonna trace a volleyball. Don't forget to breathe. Keep the core engaged. You're moving a little bit, but you're not flopping all over in your seat. And now we're going to turn this into a figure eight with a hand flip. So you're going to flip up and down, up and down with the figure eight. And again, engage the core so that you can feel yourself stable here in your seat. Breathe. Hmm, this feels so nice. We're strengthening the arms and we're strengthening the back, which is really important because when we do a lot of work in the front of our body, which is not just knitting or crocheting, this is also computing and driving and all the things that we do in our modern society, this is a great way to undo it. Strengthening those opposite muscles. All right, bring the elbows in at your sides and we're just going to rotate through the rotator cuff, in and out, as if you're holding a tray of goodies. Oh, maybe I'll have some, no, nah, I won't have any. Oh, maybe I'd like to, no, nah, I'm good. You know, <laughs> make a game of it. You don't have to be serious all the time, right? So just feeling those rotator cuffs moving. And you know what? Rotator cuff injuries are really common. I don't know too many people who get through life without something. And as we get older, our shoulders tend to get a little more sensitive. As in like <clears throat> sleeping starts to hurt. Well, this is one of those exercises that helps to undo that. We're strengthening those tiny little rotator cuff muscles that are so important for supporting all the other bigger muscles in the shoulder. So a few more of these, you can go fast, you can go slow, as long as we're moving them. And then the last, almost second one, second last. Keep your elbows tucked in and then reach one and then the other. And when your elbow comes in, you're kind of crunching it against or slapping it against your torso. <clears throat> so nice and strong, bringing the energy, working the joint, stimulating the torso, stimulating the organs. <laughs> let's not think at all about bat wings here and just think about how good this feels okay up breathe in hold your breath and squeeze mula bandha as if you got a ping pong ball and you're trying to suck it up your hoo-ha And then release everything. I'm going to bring the arms out to the side again. And this time, start with your volleyball and go forward with your circles. Baseball, getting a little smaller. You can see how we're bringing this all together now. And then golf ball. Tiny little circles, tiny little circles. It's burning so good. You're getting stronger. What a lovely break. And you didn't even have to stand up. And relax, place the hands on your shins, ha. Alrighty, take the right hand out in front of you. You're just gonna pull back and do a little tick-tock. So we're rotating from the shoulder joint and feeling it through the forearm. Switching hands. You can probably still feel your shoulders. They're alive. <laughs> it's a good thing. 
take care of our bodies. You know, they say if you don't use it, you lose it, and that's true. And I think that's a big reason why as we get older, our shoulders tend to be more sensitive. We just aren't doing these little movements. And so it's important to practice, practice, practice. Shake it out. And then hands open and closed, downwards. Open and close to the side. Open and close way up high. Shake it out. And then this time flip your palm down and tick tock. That was Brian. He's having his zoomies right now. Switch to the other arm. Tick tock. Shake it out. Hands open and closed. Down low. To the middle. Up high. Huh. All right, good. Now. I feel like that was a really good break, but if you want to sort of like let it all go, this is when you would get up, stand with your feet just a little while the hip distance apart and slap yourself with your arms completely limp. Just like that, toning the body, letting everything go. So anything you might be hanging on to, any tightness is just locked away. Whew. And there you have it, your knitting break. I hope you enjoyed practicing with me, with me today, and I will see you again next time. Namaste. Namaste.